futuristic Yamaha MOTOROID 2 balances and parks itself by pulling the kickstands on its own. Yamaha Motor is gearing up for Japan Mobility Show 2023, which runs between October 28th and November 5th, and as a pre-gift to its fans. It reveals the upgraded concept of the 2017 MOTOROID motorcycle. The all-new Yamaha MOTOROID 2 elevates the experimental motorcycle model by making it self-operating as it balances and parks itself and boosting its artificial intelligence so that the vehicle can instantly recognize its owner from afar and prepare itself for the ride. The smart Yamaha MOTOROID 2 motorcycle unfolds the kickstands on its own when it is asked to park itself and slowly folds them back up when it is time to cruise. Alongside this feature, the upgraded motorcycle concept is expected to receive a setup where it moves alongside the rider. Yamaha has yet to elaborate on this feature, but with the new technologies the research and development team plans to install, it is possible that the rider may not need to fully tilt their body when they turn as the Moto ROID 2 will do it for them as soon as the motorcycle senses changes in their movement. Design-wise, the new Yamaha Motor MOTO ROID 2 motorcycle concept looks like a futuristic butterfly ready to take off in a utopian or dystopic city. In the images released by the Japanese brand, an alien-shaped form, albeit amorphous, seems to sit on the motorcycle, with the kickstands as its feet. Copper highlights accentuate the steel and white color scheme of the motorcycle and give it a shiny gleam. Its tires seem puncture-resistant enough and can twist sideways for easy turns. Hover was founded in Moscow, Russia, in January 2014 by inventor, tech entrepreneur, and businessman Alexander Atamanov. Atamanov holds bachelor's degrees in engineering and law as well as a master's degree in the management of innovation processes. He has founded and sold several companies before founding Hover and holds numerous patents relating to the various products and services that he has successfully brought to the marketplace. Hoversurf was the company's original name. It has been reported that some of the investors in the company include Kiwi, the start of Ventures, Ismail Akhmatov, Nikolai Balik, Yevgeny Medvednikov, Maxim Korobov, and possibly other Russian investors. In 2018, the company moved its Moscow headquarters to Burlingame, California, but in 2019, Hover moved their headquarters back to Moscow. Scorpion is a single-passenger, altitude-limited quadcopter hover bike which started as a crowdfunding project. The Scorpion has a maximum speed of 69 km per hour, 43 miles per hour, a maximum altitude of 4.6 meters, 15 feet, and has a range of 21 km, 13 miles. The flight time between 15 to 40 minutes depending upon the payload. If you have a very heavy passenger, the flight time could be a maximum of 15 minutes and if you only had a lightweight camera system on the hoverbike, the flight time could 40 minutes. The hoverbike uses LiDAR and the pilot can set any altitude they want and the hoverbike will hold at that altitude. Dutch designer Anouk Wipricht explores the intersection of fashion and technology. She devised a spider dress that protects the wearer's personal space and a cage dress that discharges 1 million volts of electricity. Now, she created a 3D printed dress with wearable eyeballs that move depending on the brain activity, unveiled during the Ars Electronica Festival which runs between September 6th and 11th, 2023 in Linz, Austria. The mind-controlled digital eyes measure the cognitive load and activity of the wearer in real time, showing them how much stimulus their brain receives at the moment. The 3D printed dress with moving eyes aims to show the direct correlations between the wearer's actions and how their brain reacts to the series of movements they make. The mind-controlled 3D printed dress named Screen Dress functions through a brain-computer interface. The chipsets inside each eyeball, engineered with medical engineering GmbH, are connected to the electroencephalogram sensor that records the brain activity. The ensemble is produced using PTC's on-shape design software and printed with HP Incorporation. Overall, the software interface employs machine learning to estimate the wearer's mental workload. And the six circular displays extending from the garment's sculpted neck piece then show the workload in real time. Anouk Wiprick's 3D printed dress with moving eyes is named Screen Dress. Lexus introduced a short teaser video for Slide, a hoverboard that appears to not just live up to our Back to the Future 2 dreams but, at least stylistically, improve on them. Better yet, it's more science than science fiction. 
Here's how it works and why you won't find one at Toys R Us anytime soon. Let's start with that teaser video, a scant 37 seconds of hoverboard hype that almost prompts more skepticism than excitement. A bamboo and carbon fiber skateboard, emitting wisps of smoke, levitates an inch or two off of what appears to be a concrete surface. A foot approaches as if to mount and ride, and then nothing. We cut away. That's not a lot to put one's faith in. We're barely a year past the most recent convincing hoverboard hoax a funny or die promotion. It turned out in or halfway through the year in which Beat T5 took place, a ripe time for attention-grabbing tie-ins. Even the information Lexus did provide at the time didn't jibe with what the teaser shows. According to the company's briefly stated promotional materials, the device employs magnetic levitation to achieve and maintain liftoff, which would be well and good if it weren't for where it was levitating. It's a tease, right? It gives you the impression that this thing is floating on top of concrete, says Mike Norman, director of the Materials Science Division at Argonne National Lab, which it's not. Fortunately, the bad news stops there. Surface trickery aside, there are probably magnets or steel mixed in or just underneath that concrete the Lexus hoverboard really does live up to its name. Roads and sidewalks in the world's cities are shared by pedestrians, cars and bicycles, and more recently new micromobility means of transportation such as e-scooters. As the number of e-scooters rapidly grows in many cities, so does the need to provide safety systems for those using them. In a world where there are still too many casualties in the transport system, and when society is evolving rapidly to new ways of mobility, Autoliv is researching new solutions to make the journey safer to anyone's destination. This first e-scooter test is a good example of the commitment of Autoliv to save more lives, exploring new solutions for one of the new ways of mobility, says Jordi Lombard, Autoliv CTO. In the unfortunate event where a collision occurs between an e-scooter and a vehicle, the tested airbag solution will reduce the collision force to the head and other parts of the body. The ambition to evaluate protection for e-scooters underlines Autoliv's strategy to expand beyond occupant safety for light vehicles to safety for mobility in society, says Cecilia Sunavang, Autoliv Vice President of Research. The tested concept airbag for e-scooters will complement the Pedestrian Protection Airbag PPA, previously introduced by Autoliv. Whereas the airbag for e-scooters is mounted on the e-scooter, the PPA is mounted on a vehicle and deploys along the A-pillar-slash-windshield area. This makes it the only airbag to deploy on the outside of a vehicle. Working together, the two airbags offer increased protection for drivers of e-scooters specifically in the case of a head-to-head -head collision with a vehicle. Fluid Reality is offering an alternative to currently available haptic VR gloves, developing a cheaper, more lightweight device that doesn't need to be tethered to bulky backpacks or trail multitudes of tubing. It's designed to provide users with a high-resolution VR experience, direct to their fingertips. Haptics offers an extra dimension to a virtual reality VR, or 3D environment, and is essential for users to experience the feeling of being truly immersed in those environments. So far, though, haptic gloves such as those developed by Haptex and Meta are tethered to bulky control units with a bunch of burdensome wires and tubes. Not so fluid reality's haptic VR glove, which offers a fully wireless, lightweight, and completely self-contained unit. Fluid reality's glove has 160 dynamic haptic feedback actuators designed to give users high-resolution touch delivered directly to each of their fingertips. So, using the glove to play a virtual violin, for example, should enable the user to feel each of the instrument's individual strings. Here's how it works. Housed in each fingertip haptic array are bubble-like pixels containing a fluid that fills and stretches the bubble when activated. Every pixel is a dedicated, electrically controlled pump only hundreds of microns thick. The pumps contain no moving parts and operate on the principle of electroosmosis, directly attracting charge within the fluid to cause it to flow. Fluid Reality's breakthrough design is meant to bring objects of different shapes, sizes, and textures to life. At 0.2 in 5 mm thick, the haptic arrays are low profile and run on a low power of 10 mW per pixel. They're entirely self-contained with no tubing or wiring running to external equipment. The glove has a battery life of around 3 hours. Humanity's need for long-term data storage continue to grow at a staggering pace. As a species, we continue to generate large amounts of high-value data, our personal histories, medical, industrial, scientific data, etc., that is crucial to our long-term survival. 
with demand projected to exceed hundreds of zettabytes by 2025. Despite this need, existing magnetic media simply do not provide a sustainable and cost-effective solution. Magnetic media degrades over time, requiring significant emissions, energy, and cost to safely store long-lived data. Project Silica is developing the world's first storage technology designed and built from the media up to address humanity's need for a long-term, sustainable storage technology. We store data in quartz glass, a low-cost, durable worm media that is EMF-proof and offers lifetimes of tens to hundreds of thousands of years. This has huge consequences for sustainability, as it means we can leave data in situ and eliminate the costly cycle of periodically copying data to a new media generation. We're rethinking how large-scale storage systems are built in order to fully exploit the properties of the glass media and create a sustainable and secure storage system to support archival storage for decades to come. We are co-designing the hardware and software stacks from scratch, from the media all the way up to the cloud user API. This includes a novel. For years, Motorola has been at the forefront of innovation, and our commitment to bringing meaningful and thoughtful experiences to our consumers remains unwavering. We've embedded AI features in many areas of our devices, like camera, battery, display, and device performance. But the modern smartphone experience is going through a transformative shift, with AI at the center, serving as both a personal assistant and a tool to enhance everyday tasks, improve performance, and create more meaningful experiences for our users. Tech World 23, Motorola is taking its AI endeavors to another level and showcasing innovations that redefine the possibilities of flexible hardware and also introduced exciting new AI features. These features range from generative theming to a sophisticated personal assistant. Motorola continues to push boundaries and invest in flexible display technology and devices. This new conceptual device uses FHD plus pole display that can be bent and shaped into different forms depending on users' needs.